Hi, I'm David Pritt and welcome to My Week in Football. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of My Week in Football. This is week 8 and so far the videos have been going great. Um, I'm getting used to talking to the camera a bit more. I don't have to edit as much, which is a massive help. So I went to six games this week, which is, seems a lot, but I'm pretty gutted because it should have been seven. But one of them got rearranged to behind closed doors. So I was hoping to do seven in seven, but I only managed to do six. But it's still good going, to be honest. So the first game was on Friday. It was the under-23s against Fulham, which was a pretty competitive game, really. I thought Fulham played well, United played well. And um, it didn't really start to get going goal-wise until the second half after Mundell Smith got a red card after he fouled Ramazani. I think he was, I'm not too sure, it was definitely a straight red, but Ramazani had been getting a few fouls all the way through the game, so I think it was just a culmination of that and it was a bad challenge. So he got sent off. And then in the 85th minute, um, Largi Ramazani again, brilliant on the right, wriggled past a few players. Passed it up to Dylan Levitt, who slots it home for 1-0. And you think, right, that's it now. Five minutes ago, we've won the game. Got the three points. Uh, but um, now, two, two minutes into injury time, Brandon William gets um, a red card. I think that was it, two yellows. So he got sent off. And then two minutes after that, so, um, still in injury time, there was a foul in the box, apparently. From what I've been told, it was on the other end of the pitch. From what I've been told, it should never have been a penalty. But the referee gave a penalty. And you're thinking, Christ, that's it. We've this this game's gone. We've you know got one nil up late on, and we're going to end up drawing it. But Matty Kovar pulled out an amazing save, kept us in it, and we ended up winning the game one nil, which was brilliant. You know, both teams finishing with ten men, which is disappointing. But after all, we got the result, which is all that mattered. So on the Saturday, I went to Old Trafford, where we played Leicester in the Premier League, and it was one of them games. I'd, at the moment, United just don't seem to be clicking. You know, things are good at certain points, and then they're not at the other. And to be honest, I didn't really enjoy this game. It was um, early on. Rashford got a penalty, uh, slotted that home, which you know, after all the controversy about penalties, was always good. Um, the only thing really was Rashford in the second half. He got a free kick and hit the top of the crossbar. And yeah, that was it really. We ended up winning one nil. It wasn't the best of games, you know. If you're a United fan, you've probably seen the game or the highlights. And yeah, it wasn't the best, but it's one of them. We won the game, so you can't complain. Sunday, I went to um, Preston. I watched Blackburn Rovers ladies, they're called sorry, against Sheffield United women. Um, the reason I went there is Amy Palmer is on loan at Sheffield and we also got ex-player Naomi Hartley playing for Sheffield as well. So if I had the opportunity, I'm probably going to go to a couple of Sheffield women's games because um, it's always good, good to support the loan players. So that was, um, that was a cracking game really. So Blackburn got the lead with um, Shaf um, Saffron Jordan, sorry. She got it um, in the early 19th minute, I think. And then a um, couple of minutes later... Um, Jade Pennock gets a goal, who's, I think she was top scorer for Sheffield last season. So, um, one all, and you're thinking, great, you know, this game's great. So, it finished half time at 1 1. Then, Katie Williamson, she got a header from a corner, put it in, and her celebration was, I know Zin, so a passionate celebration, screaming towards us. Brilliant, really. And then, um, Wilkinson, a few minutes later, to Pennock, she got her second goal, got a close range. So, 3 1, and then. In injury time, Natasha Flint got one back for Blackburn, and the game finished 2-3 um, three or 3-2 three, to Sheffield, which was a yeah, really good game. And um, I'm definitely going to go back and watch Sheffield again. On the Monday, Arsenal came to Lee Sports Village to play our first home game in the Women's Super League. And I thought, once again, it was sim very similar to the City game in certain aspects, where United played well against a really good team, but in the end, Arsenal were just better, the better team. And in the end, uh, Van der Donk came on in the second half. And the pressure was building. The pressure and pressure, pressure. Mary Ips was making great saves, first half and second half. And you could see the goal coming. And Van der Donk got the ball after a bit of a bounce and half volleyed it in. And 1-0 late on. And you can't really complain. I mean, it's gutting when it happens. But, listen, we're more or less a brand new team, we've been around a year, 
We've played City now, who finished second last season. We played Arsenal, who finished first last season. And we've done all right against them. I'm not saying we're better than them or we should have won, but we are, we're doing all right. And I can see us doing really well in this league. Um, we've got Liverpool next. I can see us, hopefully, if we win that game, I think we'll be on a run then till, till uh, we next play Arsenal or City. But you never know, we, our confidence might grow, our, our new players might gel better and by the time the games come around again, we might beat them next time. But at the moment, it just didn't work out. And But I'm super proud of the team and I you know, really can't wait for the next game. So Tuesday, I had a day off, didn't go to any games, which was all right, uh, you know, <laughs> a bit of a rest. Um, but on Wednesday, I went to Altrincham where the under, it originally it was supposed to be the under-23s, but it got changed to the under-19s played Hertha Berlin 2, which is their reserve team, rather than saying reserves or under, whatever they call it, 2. So, another cracking game, it really was. Quite a good um, crowd as well, considering that United didn't advertise it, which I still don't understand why they don't do this. It was all down to Altrincham to advertise it by putting posters up and stuff. It was free entry, and it was just, it was a cracking game, and I wish United had advertised it more, and more people had turned up. So, 34th minute, Hertha Berlin get a goal. I mean, that had been coming. The pressure was on. You could see, clearly see they were probably a better team than us. And um, they got the goal. And after that, you're thinking, it's probably going to be one of these days where Hertha Berlin are going to get a few against us. I mean, if we can get one or two, you know, it'd be, at least we'll get consolation. But, yeah, in the 41st minute, Mark Helm wins the ball back brilliantly, runs forward, passes it unselfishly to Largi Ramazzani, and he slots home to make it one all, and you're thinking, great, you know, great, one all at half time. Maybe should we, get, we could go for this. But then again, um, we made some substitutions in the 63rd minute. I think um, everyone, bar the keeper, who, came, who was subbed at half time, and then there was an injury in the first half where uh, Mark Helm came on for Dylan Hugerworth. But everyone, all the other substitutions came on at that point. I think there was five or six. And then five minutes later, um, Hertha Berlin get another goal. Once again, the pressure was just on. You could see it coming. It, it's just one of them. You know, you can't complain when the a team are better than you and they got a goal. But United resilience and they came back. And um, Deji Satana, he wins the ball on the left. Run, makes a great run all the way down the wing, cuts inside and slots it past the keeper for 2-2. Two -two. And, yeah, it was a cracking, cracking game. Um, I you know, considering they were the probably better team, we we did we really did well. You know, considering it's two two. Um, Paddy Evra was there again. Had a little chat with him after the game about, and you know, he's doing his coaching badges, and yeah, he's going great. So these nine teams should be playing more games because I asked Nicky but about it because we're not in the UEFA Youth League this season. They're going to try and sort friendly games out during the um, the European week. So obviously we've just. Played the last night against Astana, um, so that in that week the 19 should be playing a team, and hopefully they're all, all going to be at Altrincham because it's easy for me to get to, and a lot of people because obviously, the, especially the public transport around there, they've got trains, trams, and um, bus station. You know, most people can get there. But yeah, cracking game, and I can't wait for more. And my final game of the week was last night, which was Astana. In the UEFA Youth, uh, not UEFA Youth League, sorry, the um, UEFA Europa League. What can I say? Um, you all probably saw it. Wasn't a great game. Really wasn't a good game. And I think the problem we have at the moment is lack of creativity in midfield. I mean, the best thing of the night for me was seeing the likes of Axel Tuanzebe, you know, and Taif Chong, Angel Gomez, and especially Mason Greenwood. And I had the privilege of seeing him score his first goal for the first team, which was a cracking goal. And I've been I've been super fortunate where I've watched Greenwood over the years. I think I first saw him at under fourteens level. And so now I've seen his first goal for the debut and first goal for the eighteens. I've seen his debut and first goal for the twenty threes. And I've, I've, I wasn't in Paris, so I didn't see his debut, but I've seen his first goal for the first team. So. Yeah, I'm super happy and fortunate about that. And, you know, there's plenty more to come from this kid. Like I say, he's only 17. And most of the night, he wasn't playing in his natural position. When he was more central, you could see the, the threat he had. So, yeah, I'm 
I'm looking forward to seeing him play more, and I just hope now he plays with the likes of Pogba, you know, someone who can give him the ball and in good positions, because I think them two would be perfect together. You see Pogba sometimes, and he doesn't, you know, there's no run on for him, there's no one in space where he can pass the ball or do this or do that, which he, he's known to do, and people get frustrated with Pogba, but for me, it's, I, I get frustrated with the forward players not moving and not, not wanting the ball, but I think with Mason... I think Pogba should be able to find him all the time. So hopefully he's going to be playing a bit more, going to get a few more goals and he's going to become a superstar. Right, so that was it. My week in football. Um, bit of a longer one today. I'm not sure of the video time, but for me, long week. Watching a few good, great games, a couple of good games and a few not so good games. But um, next week, what am I doing? So no game tonight. I'm... I think I'm going to Liverpool on Sunday for the Sheffield women's game. I'm going to Aston Villa for the reserves. Um, I think we've got Rochdale midweek in the cup. So, yeah, that's a two or three games I should definitely be doing. And if there's any more, I'll obviously be going to them. But, yeah, I hope you like it. Leave a comment if you do, or even if you don't, or if you want to see anything different or what to criticise or... Tell me you need to do something different. Leave it in the comments below. But yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.